Hi everybody, this is Dr. Robert Pierce. I'm a general practitioner in Australia. In America that would be a family physician. And I'm here to talk to you about ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. We all know hyperactive kids. We've all seen hyperactive kids. What actually causes this? Is it inherited? Doesn't seem to be very good evidence for that. They've had a good look and not come up with much. Is it something else? I propose that the true cause of this disorder is that there is something eaten by the mother in pregnancy and I believe that I've identified it. And furthermore, it is also the same food which causes Alzheimer's disease. Now there's a surprise for you. So what could it be? Now back in the 1990s, I was very curious about Alzheimer's disease and my investigations led, to me, led me to conclude that it was probably caused by steam deodorised, that is refined, vegetable seed oils, polyunsaturated food oils, canola, sunflower, corn, grape seed, cotton seed, common supermarket vegetable oils are seriously low in vitamin E. I discovered this in old nutrition journals and I was alarmed. I have found that many adults in my general practice who are using these vegetable oils were a little bit forgetful, sensitive to bright light, carried sunglasses everywhere and they couldn't see in the dark. They were night blind. I was intrigued by this and I thought this looks very serious because 40 or 50 years later these people might develop Alzheimer's which fortunately is very, very slow to develop. What's not so slow to develop is the similar oxidative damage in the developing brain, in the fetal brain. Now I didn't guess at this, I just noticed that in the young families using vegetable oil, say sunflower oil and making chips at home, potato chips two or three times a week, where the mother and father had this seed oil syndrome, this forgetfulness, the sensitivity to bright light, the children, especially the boys, were frequently hyperactive and running around my surgery out of control. I saw this so many times I became intrigued and I proceeded to study the diets retrospectively. What did the mother eat? What had she eaten in the pregnancy? I was suspicious as it might be the same oils which made the mother forgetful and sensitive to bright light because they're vitamin E deficient. And I was able to show that virtually all the mothers of 80 hyperactive children had consumed vegetable oils, often in Chinese takeaway or salad dressings or in, as a cooking oil at home, uh, it, to produce these hyperactive children. And the, in pregnancies where they did not use these oils, there was no hyperactive outcome. And this was a very concerning finding. I found uh, in, in 80 normal children that the mother had not used such oils in pregnancy, whereas in those who had produced hyperactive children, 78 out of 80 of the mothers clearly recalled being regularly exposed to such oils through most or all of, or all, or all of the pregnancy. I took these figures, this uh, overwhelming da data, to the local children's hospital and they insisted the disease was genetic and they didn't want to hear me. So uh, it's been uh, put on the shelf. Uh, I've asked them to do proper, proper controlled studies using a rating data to confirm the hyperactivity because I diagnosed it very quickly, of course. And they might have liked to take more time to diagnose. The next thing I did with these children was knowing they were probably burning essential fatty acids in their brain and retina, such as omega-3, I gave them fish oil, uh, perhaps one or two capsules a day, which was cut open by the mother and put in the mashed potato. I managed to get fish oil into them. I changed the family, all the family, to olive oil, and I saw very good improvements in every child I treated, and that was dozens and dozens and dozens in the mid-1990s. Not one of those children needed to go on Ritalin, no stimulant drugs, not one. They were very, very much better. They were still a bit hyperactive, but they were good at their schoolwork. The teachers couldn't understand why they were so good. They were much, much less aggressive. In fact, they weren't aggressive at all. And I was pleased with what I saw. So that was a long time ago. I've since shifted to a more affluent suburb where there's mostly olive oil used, and I haven't seen many hyperactive children here. And the ones I have seen, the mother did use the vegetable oil in pregnancy. So we've got a new discovery here, a fundamental and very disturbing discovery, that uh, uh, the worldwide consumption of vegetable oils, this is refined vegetable oils, has risen enormously in the last 20 or 30 years. And I think it's causing a parallel twin epidemics of Alzheimer's disease in older people after many, many years exposure. But in just nine months, we get a hyperactive kid. This is happening in South Africa. It's in Venezuela. It's, it's increasing, increasing social violence and aggression in hyperactive children. When they're in their teens, they are... Uh, they are a, a 
are very likely to indulge in drug abuse and alcohol, not so much in heroin, but they just can't get jobs, they can't work, they can't, can't concentrate. Then we've got about 8 to 10% of kids with, with, with ADD, and we've got about 4 to 5% of adults who've got adult ADD. And they don't do well. They're involved in crime and drugs frequently. They can't concentrate, they feel depressed, they're a mess. They just can't get anywhere in life, especially if they're male. So we've got a major issue here of social violence, aggravated psychopathic behaviour, and we've got up to 40% of inmates in American jails who've got a childhood history of ADD. Now, that, in adulthood, you can treat the ADD with drugs. You need to use the stimulant drugs there, like Ritalin, because it's too late to use the fish oil, although it should be given a go. Uh, the big opportunity is to hit the children with fish oil before they're 10 years old, while the brain is still growing, and you should stop them needing... Uh, or they, they should, it, it should help them to develop. So that's my point about ADD, is that it's almost certainly a modern brain nutrition epidemic. The cause has not been recognised. I've approached numerous ADD organisations. They're not interested. They uh, are involved with doctors who believe it's genetic, for which there's virtually no evidence. There are a few genes. They're very weak. And they're not very common. And uh, on their own, they probably don't cause much at all, just a bit of risk-taking. They just don't cause the disease. And we've got a major issue here that there is a big nutritional thing happening, and medicine focuses instead on what you expect it to focus on, and that is genes that they are, which are completely imaginary. So we've got a, a, a possibility of ending this ep epidemic and simultaneously getting rid of Alzheimer's by correcting all vegetable oils for low vitamin E, by government action, by a law, and we can then expect this disease to clear up, and that's the end of my story.